So I'm a little cramped in here because of this wall, but uh, hopefully I can do the start of this video anyway. What I want to do today is I want to put a vent in the bottom part of my door. The reason I want to vent here is basically because of circulation. I have the uh, roof vents with fans in them and they draw air usually from the windows which are way up here. And what I want to do is close the windows and actually only have the air coming from the bottom. That way it goes right through the trailer and it goes up. And secondly, because the fans don't use much energy, I can keep them on all day. And with that in mind, I can leave my trailer with the fans on. If I have a vent here, I, I don't have to keep the windows open. So if it rains when I'm out, I don't get wet. And the kind of vent that I've got is one where it slopes down. So uh, this is called a gable vent. It's about an eight, 8 inch by 8 inch gable vent. Uh, really cheap. It's about probably under $10. And uh, putting it here any rain that comes in will just uh, it's it's protected here there's also a little bit of a screen in there for bugs so should be no issues there now these actually don't come with any mounts what it is I made this and this is uh, one inch uh, angled aluminum uh, I used a one by th uh, three foot piece and not no big deal on tools here uh, hacksaw a vise and a file and that's all I did I just bent went around and bent it as I cut it so that fits in there like that so what I'll do is I'll make a hole in my door I'll put the vent the uh, the, the vent in and then this I will fasten on the inside and that should do it uh, but uh, seeing I'm in cramped conditions anyway I'm not going to do it here I'm going to take the door off and I'm going to do it in the garage so I got the door off the trailer and I've just got it elevated off the garage floor and uh, traced around uh, the vent where the vent hole has to be drilled. So next step is I just uh, drill some starter holes, 3 8 inch drill, and then I use a scroll saw. that are uh, worried about the security about having a plastic vent on their door uh, reality check there's only styrofoam in between the inside and the outside a little bit of cladding a little bit of wood somebody wants to get into your trailer they're gonna get into your trailer So along with drilling four holes that I'll rivet the vent in place, I'm not going to put that in yet because I'm going to glue it. I also drilled four holes in the back plate. And those I have to line up before I can cement the vent in place. So I'll do that now. Unfortunately, my marine sealant plugged up, so I had to poke a hole in the side.
The sealant didn't spread out as much as I thought, so I went around the edges with a little bit more. Now that it's all sealed up, it's ready to go back on the trailer. Now I've got the door back on the trailer, so here's what it looks like on the trailer with the vent in place. It's all sealed up, doesn't look too bad, um, but let me show you what it looks like inside. So what I did is I took the piece I cut out and I trimmed it down a little and it now fits back in there. So it's like it was before. I have the full insulation if I need it when it's cold, but it also pops out. So here's the vent for cooling. Nice thing about this vent is you can see out and down when you're inside the trailer, but it's very difficult for somebody from the outside to look up, especially because it's white. If they had a flashlight, the white would sort of blot out what's what's inside there. So a little bit of security, uh, good ventilation and insulation as well. So adding a vent to your door is pretty basic. Most people can do it if they have the right tools. But when it gets to the axle, that's a little bit different. And I draw the line here. I am not going to show you step by step how to replace an axle. The alignment and the installation of an axle on a trailer is critical. And your safety of you and the trailer depends on it. Get the professionals to do it if you can't do it yourself. So all I'm going to do in this video is just give you a few observations so you can decide whether you need your axle replaced or not. Enjoy! So here's a shot of my trailer with the old axle in place. As you can see, it rides a little low and there's not much clearance between the wheel and the fender. When I took the wheel off, it confirmed that I couldn't adjust this angle, that it was fixed in place. I also found the rusty old tag in the middle of the axle, which confirmed that it had a 2,000 pound limit. Getting underneath gave me a better picture of what my trailer was really riding on. Okay, so here's the axle on the passenger side. And as you can see, it's a little rusty. Um, the bearings actually are not that bad. I, I was actually only going to, uh, to repack the bearings, but they seem pretty good. I had been lubing it uh, as I traveled. But uh, there's a few things of concern. One is, is the angle of the axle. It's in the, in the negative direction. In other words, it's sloped up that way. According to the manufacturer, it's actually supposed to be sloped down this way, about 22 degrees. So I'm assuming that the, uh, the rubber packing that's, that actually gives the suspension is, uh, it, it's old, it's probably shrunk a little bit. So in any case, I'm gonna bring it down to 22 degrees. I'm gonna get an axle, actually adjust to any degree. That way I can get it exactly where I want but a few troubling things here. Looking a little closer, there's one feature that really bothered me. You can see back here, that's the one, there's one bolt in the front that's holding it in place, but if you go to the back, there's nothing. There's evidence of a bolt, but uh, my axle is being held on by one bolt on each side, which is not very good. Um, I wouldn't have been able to see that because the wheel was uh, on at the time, but now I know. Um, and another concern is if you look really closely, there you go. You'll see there's a, a crack on the edge here. Now, that might be bad, but it's even worse because without those two bolts holding this piece in place um, that's only going to get worse. I think once I get the bolt in there and it's rather tight that should at least reduce the concern for that. That's not a main support that's just the, a side piece so I'm going to monitor it. You can see there's also a little bit of cracking in there but it's certainly something to look out for if you're uh, inspecting your axle or underneath your trailer. So those are my main concerns. Um, I've got a, uh, an axle on order. It should be ready tomorrow and I'll go pick it up. Here's the two axles side by side. 
As you can see, the new 3500 pound axle is far more robust than the original. Measuring the old axle dimensions is critical, especially if you order remotely. If you're wrong, you may have an expensive lawn ornament. Once it was all adjusted, I christened my axle Rose. In changing the axle, I actually gained 3 inches of clearance height, which was really good for off-roading. But remember that missing step I mentioned in one of my repair videos? Fortunately, when I picked up my axle, I found a used step that fit perfectly with my A-liner. So now I can get into my trailer. So these last few improvements really helped a lot. The first one was raising the axle. I, I put in a 3,500 pound axle, which actually raised the trailer about two or three inches, which really helped on the back roads. I didn't hit any big rocks or anything like that, and uh, definitely helped with the, the vibration. There wasn't a lot that had shifted as I, uh, as I went through the, the back roads. Um, the vent definitely helps with the circulation. Uh, brings it in from the, the bottom instead of midway uh, up the windows. And of course, it's reversible. I can put that piece in and I still have the insulation I need. But because I'm a little higher now, I totally needed that new step. And there it is. So that puts me back on the road again. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my other ones. Happy camping!